Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seamlund, and in this video, we're going to talk about what is the best way to uh, boost your NAD levels. So, if you don't know, then NAD is this anti aging enzyme, and uh, it is important for aging. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about what are the best ways to boost it, and we're going to rank it in the uh, tier maker software. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! I'll also kind of cover quickly the uh, main ways to boost any of the levels. So there's different pathways in the body that uh, do so. There's the price handle pathway, there's the de novo biosynthesis pathway, and there's the salvage pathway. So price handle pathway and the de novo synthesis, those are the most uh, ones you get uh, primarily from food. And uh, you have these different precursors, nicotinic acid or basically vitamin B3 or niacin. And then there's a tryptophan. They will get converted into NAD plus eventually. And then there's the salvage pathway, which is the kind of recycling pathway. And uh, this is where uh, you have precursors like nicotinamide, NAM, which is a form of uh, niacin, but not the same. And uh, then there's a like nicotinamide riboside, which is a common supplement, and the nicotinamide mononucleotide. They will also be also converted into NAD plus. And the one of the main kind of enzymes in here is the NAMPT, uh, which is kind of the rate limiting step in terms of uh, how much NAD gets recycled. Uh, is uh, limited by NAMPT and you need NAMPT to basically have the salvage pathway um, working properly which we'll talk about uh, shortly. Shall we begin? Let's start with uh, vitamin B3 or niacin. So as you saw in the previous uh, picture uh, it is a uh, part of the price handle pathway and it converted into NAD eventually uh, you get niacin from uh, mostly animal foods, meats etc and it is a pretty important uh, nutrient as well mostly from like cholesterol metabolism, blood sugar metabolism um, and uh, yeah, obviously essential nutrient. Uh, in terms of NAD+, how much, how big of an effect does it have? Then the price and the pathway is very small. Actually, it doesn't contribute that, that much to your daily NAD synthesis. It's almost maybe very very small amount, like five to ten percent of the daily NAD comes from the price and the pathway, or the uh, even the the uh, the Nova biosynthesis pathway is also um, quite small. So I think uh, obviously you don't want to become deficient in vitamin B3 or niacin. Um, in terms of boosting NAD, <laughs> I will say that uh, mm, I'm going to put it into okay, so to say. Like, yeah, it's not super miraculous. There are no actually studies that I've seen that show or look at how much NAD you get <laughs> from vitamin B3. There's no, there's no, like almost none of these have actual studies to show, you know, how much NAD you get or compare which one is better. So to say, a few of them do, uh, but the vast majority of them don't. But my own subjective opinion is that... Um, it's okay. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't want to become deficient in uh, B3. Uh, and uh, it's just that the uh, the price handle pathway itself, it's not that the niacin is bad for NAD. It is good for boosting NAD levels. It's just that the price handle pathway itself contributes so little to your daily NAD levels, so to say. It's just, it's just a matter of how big of a contributor the price handle pathway is, not how big of a contributor uh, niacin itself is. If that makes sense. <laughs> We'll take on next, we have something else. Let's take uh, cardio. So cardiovascular exercise. Exercise is a good way to boost energy levels. And um, yeah, it's actually uh, pretty uh, important for, you know, other things as well. Energy production and mitochondrial health. Uh, I've got to put that into God tier, <laughs> actually. So uh, the way uh, exercise promotes energy levels is through the salvage pathway. So the NAMPT uh, pathway or the enzyme here is... Uh, regulated by another enzyme nutrient sensor called AMPK. So AMPK uh, basically governs NAMPT as well. And uh, that's why the exercise which raises AMPK also uh, helps with the salvage pathway, so to say. And uh, exercise is a good way to boost NAD through the salvage pathway. And the salvage pathway actually contributes a whole lot more than the price on the pathway or the de novo biosynthesis pathway. So the vast majority of our daily NAD will come from the salvage pathway uh, through basically shuttling um, uh, electrons around and uh, creating NAD through recycling it. So that's why any exercise, cardiovascular exercise specific, specifically, uh, is going to be a god tier. We'll take resistance exercise here right next to it to give a comparison. So resistance training, weightlifting, it's exercise, <laughs> uh, but it has a different effect on NAD levels uh, because resistance exercise is a much higher intensity. Uh, it actually, in many studies, has been found to uh, deplete NAD levels. So to say, it's uh, just 
if you're you know um, reaching maximum intensity, near maximum intensity, and recruiting a whole lot more muscle fibers, then you actually deplete the NAD levels by causing you know to a slightly higher amount of oxidative stress and inflammation, uh, which uh, both of them will uh, deplete or make you burn through NAD a bit more because NAD is going to be used to uh, basically treat those kind of things. Uh, so I'll put, but in general, overall, if you exercise regularly then your overall NAD levels should be higher. Um, it's just that the, in the acute, immediate, after, post-resistance uh, training, those levels will be uh, lower. And if you chronically overtrain, then you will see like your NAD levels are getting lower as well. So I'll actually put this... Uh, it's not like bad. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to be bad for your NAD levels or health overall. It's obviously one of the best things for your health. But I'll just put it into like, okay, uh, because of that. That, it, that isn't necessarily... Um, the best way to boost your NAD levels, as long as you're uh, uh, not overdoing it. Like if you're just doing moderate resistance training, then it's probably going to be fine and actually is good. But if you overtrain, then it's going to actually lower the NAD levels. Uh, next up, we'll take another form of uh, B3, so uh, nicotinamide. So it's another form of uh, niacin. And this one is uh, much better than us in, <laughs> in terms of boosting NAD. And I'll put it into actually God tier. So it's, uh, as you can know, nicotinamide is also part of the salvage pathway. So it, um, it's not limited to the price handler pathway, which itself is um, a much smaller contributor to the daily NAD pool. So nicotinamide is a huge uh, contributor to the salvage pathway uh, through NAMPT. And um, that's why it's going to be God tier. And it's also very cheap. Uh, NAS in itself is very cheap, but nicotinamide is also uh, cheap. Uh, so yeah, I'm a huge actually fan. Like a like a yeah like a cheap version of boosting NAD is uh, nicotinamide. How much does it boost it? Uh, that's you know hard to tell because I haven't seen like studies that show that how much <laughs> how much does it elevate the NAD levels uh, yet. But maybe in the future there will be some. Uh, let's take uh, fasting. So fasting can also uh, boost NAD levels um, because of uh, some reasons. We'll talk about sh shortly. Um, I will put fasting into uh, also like... Uh, let's think... Mm. I'll put it into okay or good, good tier because... Uh, the fasting also activates uh, AMPK, uh, and when I say fasting, then I don't mean like three to five day fast. Like a three to five day fast may actually yeah, eventually deplete NAD as well because of the same aspect of physiological stress and uh, sirtuins. Like uh, fasting activates sirtuins as well, which then consumes NAD as well. So if you're excessively fasting, <laughs> excessively activating sirtuins, then like a too much of a good thing uh, can be uh, harmful for the NAD levels at least. Uh, fasting doesn't cause DNA damage which the PARPs would repair, and it doesn't cause inflammation, which the CD38 uh, would uh, refer to, but it does increase sirtuins, which can um, deplete or lower some of the NAD. Uh, but the fasting also, uh, let's say time restricted eating, eating within a, a eight hour eating window or something like that, that's not really like fasting, that's just yeah, like uh, daily time restricted eating. <laughs> so uh, to clarify that. So what the fasting does is that it increases AMPK, which then, um, activates NAMPT, and because you're doing the time restricted eating, which means you're like sticking to the circadian rhythm as well, then uh, this has an additional uh, effect on the NAMPT enzyme as well, because the NAMPT is uh, SIRT1 dependent. So SIRT2 in 1 is a circadian uh, clock gene or protein, and uh, it regulates circadian rhythms and it also regulates NAMPT, which basically means that if you're not aligned with the circadian rhythms or if you're misaligned, then uh, your NAMPT is going to go offline because the sirtuin one is also offline. And as a result, you're not going to recycle the NA, NA, NAD through NAMPT, which is <laughs> really uh, complex way of saying, but uh, yeah, essentially, you have to stick to the circadian rhythms and the time restricted eating, which means that you don't eat at night, you uh, confine your eating window to a certain extent. That is um, one of the best ways actually to have the uh, salvage pathway at least uh, working uh, properly. Uh, and because it also raises AMPK to a certain to a minor degree, but it doesn't uh, over express it. 
the same way like a three-day or five-day fast I would. It's a trap. Next up, uh, we're gonna take this uh, piece of chicken, which uh, refers to tryptophan, and uh, tryptophan E is one of the precursors of the de novo biosynthesis pathway uh, for producing NAD, and uh, I'll put this into here as well next to uh, B3, uh, because um, yeah, it's a, a good way to you know raise your NAD levels, uh, but it may not necessarily be enough. So the, again, the amount of uh, NAD you get from the de novo biosynthesis pathway isn't nearly as much as from the salvage pathway uh, but obviously you don't want to become deficient of it either uh, the circadian rhythms themselves so being aligned with the circadian rhythms uh, so I'll put this into here as well because again the same reasons NAMPT CERT1 dependent and you need to be circadian rhythm aligned to have the CERT1 and NAMPT activated um, basically so uh, you don't want to become misaligned shift work and jet lag and irregular sleeping patterns will uh, basically turn off CERT1 and NAMPT and they will also uh, raise CD38 and PARPs or they will cause DNA damage which then raises PARPs and then uh, depletes the uh, NAD through that so you want to be uh, basically yeah, with, the, uh, with the proper circadian rhythm alignment getting daylight exposure and uh, avoiding blue light at night and getting good sleep which brings us to sleep so uh, oh, obviously sleep is going to be also good uh, to uh, have your body rejuvenate itself and uh, repair because a lot of these processes like uh, like autophagy and uh, growth hormone and I would imagine that a lot of the NAD uh, resynthesis also happens during sleep. So uh, yeah, very kind of important. I don't sleep. You don't sleep. I wait. Next we'll take a calorie restriction. So uh, calorie restriction very similar to fasting uh, in that sense. Um, it does activate uh, AMPK. Uh, it's not necessarily circadian and rhythm aligned or it doesn't have to be, it doesn't necessarily do that but it does raise their two wins as well a little bit so but I'll put it into like okay mm, it's uh, yeah it is a good way to have like the other longevity pathways activated so two wins and autophagy and um, AMPK and uh, probably like NAD elevation as well through the salvage pathway so to say again through the uh, NAMPT enzyme all right next up we'll take uh, fermented foods like sauerkraut so uh, the way this works is through uh, the accumulation of lactic acid which raises NADH levels which is another form of NAD uh, and uh, the NADH gets converted back into NAD as a result of that to kind of get rid of the uh, waste and uh, the the uh, fermented foods may also contain like some of the precursors to uh, to uh, NAD so we'll think I'm probably putting and gonna put it into here the same way with uh, this because you'd obviously both for the B3 and tryptophan and the fermented foods you would have to eat like you know ungodly amounts <laughs> of food to have like a significant elevation in your uh, energy levels and that's why they're still somewhat you know okay they're not inherently super effective at uh, doing the energy boost so to say that whereas like, cardio the amount of like physiological stress you experience doing cardio is much greater and the amount of like uh, activation of AMPK and those things uh, will yield a much greater response for uh, basically recycling NAD compared to just eating a piece of chicken <laughs> and the same applies to keto um, keto lowers inflammation lowers blood sugar lowers um, reactive oxygen species uh, re reduces DNA damage those kind of things um, and it does contain like some other be beneficial uh, you know uh, precursors to NAD B3 and, uh, and tryptophan uh, but it's not again superior to that. The ketone bodies also uh, help to convert NADH into NAD so um, uh, yeah ketosis does have some effects in uh, increasing NAD but it's not you know crazy effective. The same applies to uh, like uh, fruits and carbs so if the fruit does contain some uh, enzymes that uh, help to convert NADH into NAD plus uh, but again like I wouldn't rely on a fruit cleanse, <laughs> fruit uh, juice fasting to have like a elevation of NAD, uh, probably not going to be that effective. So, but it's still okay in terms of that. Uh, let's take uh, NMN and nicotinamide riboside. So we'll start with NMN. Obviously, I think they're going to be god tier because those are the supplements that actually is shown to raise NAD levels, uh, probably better than uh, NAM. Um, and yeah, th th there's actually studies that uh, show that both of them raise NAD levels. And I think that um, in a lot of ways they're superior to obviously diet they raise any levels much more than just just eating a piece of chicken and 
they may be better than uh, fast timesheet reading in some sense. Um, at least in the short term, they're going to have like a superior effect for that. They're not like a long term solution because you can still you need to still have just the circadian clock system working properly. You need to be um, doing some form of timesheet reading and uh, getting enough sleep to in the long term have your energy levels to stay them to keep them elevated. But in the short term, NMN and NR can obviously yeah still. Uh, raise their levels, but it's just like once you stop taking them, then um, your energy levels will drop as well as a result of that. But to keep them elevated, then you need the circadian rhythm alignment. Uh, which one is better, NMN or NR? I mean, that's a very uh, hot topic a lot of times, and um, there's no like clear answer. Uh, both of them raise energy levels. Um, NMN actually gets directly into the cell, converted into NAD, whereas NR gets converted into NMN first. Uh, so yeah, I think that you know both are kind of fine. Um, I personally take NMN because I think the kind of shorter, uh, basically, process of getting into the cell may be somewhat superior. And uh, that's why I also take this uh, one One of the brands that I use is uh, Do Not Age, and that has the uh, NMN that I'm you know, using on a regular basis. And obviously, kind of the best way to boost NAD levels is to just take an NAD IV. Uh, so uh, that's probably the most effective way and uh, most fastest way to have your NAD levels elevated. But again, it's a short term fix. Um, it may last for a lot longer. You may have this um, effect to stay around for even like weeks and months. Uh, but again, yeah, like if you still follow the bad lifestyle habits, then eventually you're going to uh, deplete that as well. So to keep it, to keep the NAD elevated, then you need the circadian rhythm alignment because of the NAMPT enzyme uh, that is circadian rhythm dependent, which I think is a I had to repeat it a lot of the times because no one else really talks about that. No one talks about the link between NAD and NAMPT and circadian rhythms. So I, I'm going to have to do it for, for that and uh, remind that the circadian rhythms are kind of this underlying clock system that just regulates the entire thing, including the recycling and metabolism of uh, NAD. Saunas. So saunas, uh, heat shock proteins uh, have been found to yeah help with NAD. I would say that uh, they're going to be good because the saunas mimic a lot of the cardiovascular effects of exercise. So they do raise your heart rate, they activate AMPK, they, uh, mm, they NAMPT related, and uh, they also basically have this beneficial cardiovascular effect. They mimic exercise in a lot of ways. So that's why I'm going to put it in the good. Obviously, it's not the same as actually doing cardio, but it's pretty damn close. And it's uh, from an entity perspective, then it's superior than uh, resistance training because the resistance training will actually we can put it into here bad if it's uh if you do like uh, yeah failure exercise if you're doing this crazy bodybuilding exercise then actually actually gonna be bad for the nad in the short term that you uh, burn through it and lastly one of my favorite supplements uh, glycine <laughs> so we'll put it into good uh, because uh, what glycine does is that it reduces this uh, nad ph oxidase nox and ox and uh, that is like an enzyme that uh, could you know, cause oxidative stress, etc. And uh, using glycine in studies has been found to yeah, be effective in reducing NOx and uh, kind of having thus a positive effect on increasing NADPH levels, which then also just uh, results in a greater NAD uh, effect as well. So there we have it. This is the uh, NAD tier list. The best way to is yeah, get an IV, <laughs> but it's very expensive. It's super expensive to get an IV and it's painful as well. Um, so yeah, most people aren't able to do that for obvious reasons. And uh, the next best thing I think is going to be cardio. From a just a general health perspective, it's going to be the best for NAD as well as just general health. And then are the kind of precursors. NMN, NR are, I think, a bit better than NAM, but NAM is pretty damn close. Although NAM is slightly less effective than NMN or NR, it's much cheaper than NMN and NR. So if you don't have the budget for NMN or NR, then using NAM uh, nicotinamide uh, would be a good alternative. Uh, then, yeah, you have to stick to the circadian rhythm system, which would uh, have your salvage pathway uh, activated and uh, keep it working properly. And lastly, okay, like the nutritional side, getting NAD from diet is, you know, it's still, you need it, but the results you get from that aren't probably not going to be like super uh, significant. Like uh, probably you won't, notice a huge difference but you know it depends what kind of diet you follow but i would still eat foods that have these uh precursors like uh, niacin b3 a tryptophan some fermented foods and those kind of things all right that's it for this video make sure you click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered